What is up guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you the top five flaws that I see with the 2022 and 2023 Lexus NX. So if you guys have been following along on the channel, you guys know we picked this Lexus NX 350H up, this 2023, absolutely in love with it. We had the full delivery experience. I have a whole bunch of videos, so make sure I will link that playlist in the card above. Check out our journey and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well to follow me along on the ownership experience of this compact luxury SUV. But with all of the great stuff said, there are some things that nag at me, some flaws in the design. I'm gonna give them a call out to make sure that you're aware when you're making your decision-making process. Now, these are not things that change how I feel about this SUV at all. Me and my wife absolutely love it. But after 4,000 kilometers, here are the little things that are kind of nagging me, little annoyances that have, thankfully, some of them have resolved out with some software updates, I'll talk about that. But here are the top five things, and we're gonna get started. Number one, inside of the cockpit where I am today. So let's kick it off with number one, which is the wireless charger. And I love the wireless charger. It's one of the reasons why we bought this vehicle. And the fact is, I have one of the most common phones out there. This is the iPhone 13, right? Pro Max. It's got the big notch on the camera here, which has caused some intermittent charging issues for me, which you know I found disappointing at the time. So coming in here, I would put it inside of the dock and it would charge and then disconnect from charging and charge and disconnect from charging. I had a bigger case at the time. And so what I did was I was like, okay, I looked at the forums and I saw you know, the bigger case is probably one of the reasons why it's not charging. So I went with this case here. I will also link this case in the description box down below. It's a Spygen um, slim fit case for my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And after installing this, I've had no problems with charging. So thankfully, this is a case issue. To be honest with you, it is also a design issue where if you have a phone with a huge bump or notch, it's not gonna charge reliably. For example, my wife, she has an S22 and she has that like, you know, the pop sockets here, like the rings. I don't have that. I don't need it. She does for her small hands. And because of that, she's not able to wirelessly charge. So I guess it's like a flaw in terms of the design, knowing that the majority of the phones out there are an iPhone. They have the camera bump and notch. It's not going to charge like properly, which is an issue. But since I've gone ahead, I got a new case. It's working fine now. I am happy with that. But it's something to keep in mind, right? You're going to maybe have to change your case. Think about what phone you have to make sure that the wireless charger is actively working. Now, number two design flaw, I'd say is, again, a big part of the value I really loved is Apple and Android Auto CarPlay having full wireless capability. So the fact that I don't need to plug in my phone, I can just go ahead, walk into the car and have it connect wirelessly. And look, within the first 2,000, 3,000 kilometers, it was intermittent, not like the wireless charger. I'd say if I went into the vehicle one out of every, you know, 10 times, two out of every 10 times, it would not properly connect, right? I would have to reset the system by holding the power button for five seconds. The system would reboot and then it would connect. So I found this a little bit annoying, to be honest with you. So I went back to Lexus and, you know, gave them the feedback, but I have noticed this has improved with some updates. I'm on uh, iPhone iOS 16.4, it's beta number three, whatever that is. And I have noticed it's gotten better. So it's hard for me to know whether this is a Lexus issue or a CarPlay issue for me or an Android Auto issue. I think it's a combination of both. I've also had an issue where Google Maps would not properly load up with my CarPlay, but I also found out that is not an Lexus issue. That's a CarPlay issue with Google Maps. So I kind of had that one little issue with the Google Maps and then having it not connect every once in a while, which has improved. I've, again, I've had this SUV for about three and a half months now, and I've noticed with the future software updates on the phone, it's been improving the experience. Now, I know Lexus is aware of this. I've let them know about it and it's still not perfect, but it has improved and I'm not experiencing the same issues that I used to have, but I do want to call it out. Some intermittent issues with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Next is the Lexus app. So obviously we're inside of the vehicle and a lot of this stuff has to do with the functions of the technology in the vehicle. Now, the Lexus app is working. The only problem I would say with it in terms of its flaw is that it is quite slow and sometimes gives you random errors here and there. So like, look, I can do everything that I want to do on the app. I can remote start the vehicle. I can go ahead and lock the vehicle. It gives me notifications if, you know, the doors are unlocked. I can have the integration with my Apple Watch to say to start the vehicle. It'll start auto start. It does all of this. But the only nuance I'll say with the app is that 
it is a bit kind of buggy sometimes, right? And I, I don't know exactly what it is. I can't pinpoint, you know, one thing or another that it does, like it doesn't do. It does everything that it says it does, but it just feels buggy. Sometimes I have to force close the app. Sometimes when I put a command in to kind of start the vehicle, it, it doesn't go all the way through and I don't know why. I don't like some of the UI elements that they've done. Like for example, if I wanna start the car or lock it or something, I have to press and hold right for it to actually auto start i find that a little bit weird can't you just press the button once and get it to auto start why am i pressing and holding the screen it feels a little counterintuitive in my opinion so i think there are some few things there that they could do to improve the mobile app but it's also going to go up to point four um, of kind of my i think what is a design flaws around the user profiles here so me and my wife this is our daily driver right so she's driving the vehicle a lot i'm driving the vehicle a lot we both need to use it and for some reason, one reason or another, we can set up our profiles. So I have an individual profile in my Lexus. I get in, it's connected to my digital key. It'll automatically know, okay, Sondern's in the vehicle. I'm gonna set up all his profile settings. Perfect. That all works great. The problem is in order to get access to the mobile app, the remote start functionality, all of that, you can only have one profile associated with that. So. For whatever reason, if you create two profiles in the mobile app and you have two profiles on the vehicle, only one profile on the mobile app has the ability to do the self-starting capabilities, etc. That doesn't make any sense at all. So what we had to do, so if you guys are coming into this issue, we set up our two profiles. So me and my wife, two separate profiles. We both have a digital key, right? Linked to each profile. And then on my profile, I have the mobile app and I shared my login with my wife to the mobile app. And so she logs in, um, she's got it auto saved to the mobile app from my login. And so we both share the login for the app and our profiles are separate. A little weird thing. I, I don't know why they did it. And to be honest with you, it's a little bit confusing, right? When I was setting it all up, it kind of made for not the best user experience on setup. Now that it's all set up and done, it's perfectly fine. We're both in the mobile app. It, it's working, but it's just like the setup nature of how you did the profiles and the mobile app experience was not good. So I think there's something there that can be improved for sure on that front. Finally, the last thing I will say, being in Ontario, Canada, we get a lot of cold weather and you know, a lot of ice buildup. So we got a lot of snowfall recently, you know, ice buildup, all of that. The one thing I'll say, and I actually talked to my friend who also experienced this, I only experienced this once, where the door, because of the auto, the new mechanism to unlock it, you basically put your hand inside of the door cup and then you kind of touch this button, you press this button to release it. On my door, on the driver's side, it actually froze one time. And so I kind of had to like rub it to just melt away a little bit of the ice and then it unfroze. So. That's the only other thing is like the door handles might freeze during the winter in freezing conditions. And it's not like you can't get in the vehicle. By the way, there is an emergency latch that you can pull out in the case of a worst case scenario, like the battery has died or whatever else the case is. But I just noticed in that one moment that I had, I had to go and kind of warm up that area underneath the pad, get it to melt a little bit, and I was able to access the vehicle. So just again, a minor small nuance thing. I'd say, you know, it's hard for me to come up with the five. Most of the stuff on the five here that I'm saying in terms of the flaws are majority technology based. And hopefully a lot of this can be addressed via software update. I really do believe they can hopefully address completely the issues with uh, Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. Hopefully that can get done. I know the mobile app has already had various updates to go ahead and improve the experience, so that's good. Hope to see some additions to the profile management as well, but overall, those are the top five kind of flaws that we've uncovered in about you know three and a half months of ownership with this Lexus NX. And I know this is gonna be the same for anybody with a 2022 or 2023 Lexus NX 350 or 350H or 250. Overall though, we love this vehicle. I absolutely love it. These are kind of the nitpicking, the nuances kind of of the ownership experience so far. And I hope a lot of this is gonna be addressed you know, with software updates over time. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give this video a like make sure you subscribe if you're like in the journey right now of looking to potentially purchase this vehicle and you want some tips 
or any questions that you have, leave them down in the comment box down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And you can also follow me along, subscribe to the channel on my entire ownership experience of this vehicle, but also follow me along for anything car related. I cover, you know, car reviews. I do car detailing videos. I cover it all and I'll take you to basically the latest and greatest vehicles that are coming out and keeping you up to date on that as well and sharing my thoughts on what's happening in the market as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to enjoy this vehicle, continue to add kilometers on it and give you my experience and updates on the entire ownership experience of this Lexus NX but we're just so happy with it generally so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video you know one last thing I'll mention it's not a nuance or a design flaw at all but I noticed some other reviews mention it they talk about the door handles the accessibility in and out of the vehicle being confusing I agree for new people coming in the vehicle like it's a change and you have to educate them which is something different but let me tell you we've been using this vehicle now almost four months three and a half months we love the way the door handles work it's way more intuitive it's one push and out right instead of having to pull a handle and then push out so i honestly think a lot of people just don't spend enough time with the vehicle to get acclimated with it to actually understand how valuable it is and easy to use so i really love that feature 100 percent. and the other one's the shifter a lot of people complained about the shifter on some like professional reviews and i don't understand that either like i love we both love the shifter it's very easy to get into the gear that you want to get into very quick it's almost like a short shifter for a manual transmission in a way and it's been reliable and effective so those are two things that i don't really agree with in terms of what people generally say are design flaws on this vehicle and i think they're just actually two huge benefits and we've been loving that so just a kind of little bonus thing i just wanted to chime out there because i i've read it repeatedly um from like you know major publications but in reality and using it for the amount of time that we've used it it's actually a huge benefit and we really love it. And every time we go back into our old IS250, we're like, oh my God, I actually wish I had the door handles here again. It makes a big, big deal and just like, it just makes sense. It's intuitive.